is all new. Monday at 10, only on Style. Before meets after. Later on, whilst Mum was doing business, Blake was nowhere to be found. So I went upstairs to see if I could find him. Blake! Not out. Oh, put that away, Blake. Daddy's gonna be so sad. Why would Daddy be cross? Richie gets very upset when he plays with Zoe's dolls and bags. Because what? he used to dress up. He wants him to play with boy, you know, boy toys instead of girl toys. It just, it really bothers him. It's, it's not a problem for me so much. Blake likes to play with his older sister. He dresses up just like she dresses up. However, he likes to dress up in his little clippity-cloppity shoes and have his handbag over his shoulder. And Dad's horrified by that. He, he's just so scared that his son is going to grow up wearing dresses. I, I, I don't know too many fathers out there that would say, you know, yeah, okay, I would love my son to, you know, play with dresses rather than play with the tool bench, trucks, or whatever it may be. It's really, really common to worry about that. But Richard needs to realize it's just kids playing. I mean, you know, they're having fun just dressing up in, in big people's clothes. Later on, whilst mum was running the business, it was left up to dad to give the kids snacks. And it was certainly clear they weren't just hungry for food, but they were hungry for attention too. You're not having candy, there is none. You're not having candy, forget about it. I'll give you one piece. Two pieces? Well, snack time in my house is all day long. Constantly they go into cabinet. They take out snacks and drinks and they want to go in the refrigerator and they want to eat all day. No, we're not having that again. Yes. There's no more. Yes. There's no more. <laughs> They're driving me crazy right now. <laughs> Cam, what part did you understand? Come on, everybody inside. Now no one's getting nothing. No. Nope. Close the refrigerator. Put it back. And you're not getting anything if you speak to me that way. No. Nope. We'll start over. Cameron and Zoe, when they misbehave, they have total meltdowns and they start to scream and they stamp their feet. And it really, in a way, is like watching a two-year-old. So we're not eating mashed potatoes now. No, we're not having mashed potatoes. <laughs> Is that enough? What's that? Mashed potatoes. Oh. First, Dad says no mashed potatoes. Then he's scooping out a whole mountain of mashed potatoes. I mean, nice, Dad. Nice message. These kids know that if they cry long enough, they'll get what they want. I want two pieces. Two pieces of what? No, OK. After watching Dad clearly give the kids what they wanted, it was obvious to me that I needed to get Mum and Dad on the same page so we could sort out discipline. First thing that I really want to establish with the pair of you is the juggling. The business and the family. There's no structure that allows the pair of you together to say, right, this is business time and now this is family time. You've got to have some boundaries because you do have three little ones that need you. They're looking for the security and the stability in the repetition that happens during the day. They have no stability because we're always all over the place. You're darting around all the time. Mm -hmm. But they don't know whether they're coming or going. The second thing that I do want to talk to you both about is your relationship together as business partners and as parents. There's no clear communication between the pair of you and how you run the business. And what that does is it trickles into the family. Mm -hmm. As parents, you don't compromise. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very strict, I'm, I'm the no person. And the way that you both behave, which is so differently, I mean, it's like watching a movie for these kids. I mean, well, you know, which picture house are we gonna go into? Oh, you know, should we go and see the horror movie or should we go and see Disneyland? <laughs> it's given them mixed messages. You can either be the parent that your kids remember when they grow up as the one that was in there doing it with them. You know, the one that had their arms wrapped around them because they were holding on to the fishing rod as well or you're the parent that just always sat at the side. I want to be there. I want to be in there. What do you feel about Richie? I feel that you are just too easygoing with them and allow them to do whatever they want. And there's no rules with you, even if I have the rules. I don't have a problem with rules. I just have a problem with what you, you know, they're your rules. They're not our rules. Right, okay. And so we well, have to establish those rules. Not okay. you establish and I have to abide by them like as if you have four children. 
I think it's important, Richie, for you to be able to to make sure that you're not demasculated here. And I mean you know, that in a way that allows you both to feel like you can have your your place and your role and not feel like you're wearing the trousers all the time yeah. and not feeling like you're being stripped of anything that you want to do equally in your own home with your kids. This all leads to my next point, which is how the children behave. Behaviour is shocking in the house. We see with Blake punching, biting, and when he does that, he's picked up and yelled at, but still, you've got him there. You're still holding him and pacifying him, and yeah. what that leads to is a regression. I look at Blake, and I'm like, he's three years old, and actually, when he's with the pair of you, it's like he's a baby. He talks like a baby. He's, I'm a he talks like that. All the while, while that's happening, who do you think's having a meltdown if things don't go their way? Cameron's um, eye. Oh, yeah, because at this stage, what they're not getting is the emotional input that they need from their parents. They're being starved of that emotional input because everything is going into the business, everything. But what are they getting? What are they drawing back? Nothing. And then we get to the next bit. I'm bored, so what am I gonna do? Oh, snack, I want a cookie, I want this, I want that. But then what happens when you then wanna go to a restaurant and you wanna sit down and you wanna have a meal? They're not hungry. They're over it, been eating all day. What you're losing out there Again, it's time we sit down as a family. Madness. Talking about madness, your kids like to have fun with clothes and dress up and play. They'll put shoes on and they'll clippity-clop and they'll put bags over and they'll play mini adults. Well, that rubs you up the wrong way, doesn't it, Richie? Good boy. Uh, I don't <laughs> want to dress up in girl's clothes. Because what? Because you're scared he's going to grow up as a transvestite? Because you think he's going to grow up? And, and, and <laughs> he wants to put stuff on. It's dress up. That's all it is. It's dress up. OK? Come on, we've got to get a grip there. OK. So there are a lot of points here that have been made at the table with regards to what we need to work on. You have a, a, a wonderful future ahead with regards to where you can be with your family but you need to put in the groundwork now. You've already shown me your commitment to your cookie company, so now I want to see it with your family. Right. You will. All right, so let's, let's get on with it, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, no, okay. no rest for the wicked, let's go. Okay. okay. <laughs> Coming up on Super Nanny, yeah. Mommy's Little Angel goes nuclear. <laughs> and it results in one of the longest struggles in Super Nanny history when Super Nanny returns. At JC